Today on Nation, we are going to be talking with the infamous Mr. Bobby Walker. So hang out with us. Hopefully it's better than a cat video and hopefully you like it. So stay tuned for WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCR and uh, WCR Nation, of course. Thanks for checking us out. If it's your first time here, have a look around. This is like episode 92, so you have lots to catch up on. Uh, if you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids and somebody who buys your supplies through me, what's going on? It's because of you that I get to buy name brand pens. Everybody likes good pens. I'm running out of things to say. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, always uh, letting me get your supplies. Uh, if you haven't uh, and you don't know, I am a rep with Window Cleaning Resource. My number directs 862-312-2026. Please write that down. That is my cell phone. You can call me, text me, whatever you want. I'm here for you for whatever you need. I want to be your rep. If you're on Instagram, follow me, Jersey, WCR Nation. And a couple of shout outs for today. We got a bunch of them. John Byron, what's up? Tim McCucumber. <laughs> McCumber, what's up, man? Uh, David Rodriguez, of course. James Smith, Philip Humes, and Austin Moore. What is up? I got a ton. You guys have just been bombarding me with calls and texts and putting orders in, and uh, it's been absolutely awesome. So I really genuinely, genuinely appreciate everybody who does that, uh, including Mr. Bobby Walker. What's up, man? Dude, I, I just got to say, I buy a lot of stuff from you. I, I, I'll build my shopping cart out and then be like, hey, bro, hook me up. I don't ever get a shout out on this thing. What's going on with that? I do. I do. You just don't watch the show. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I got caught on that one. Hey, man, thanks for having me, Josh. I'm excited to be back, man. Yeah, I know. For sure, man. Uh, Bobby is one of the, the OG cool kids, by the way. Um, Bobby, if you guys don't know, has uh, his own podcast and his epic it is uh, life of the. Uh, actually, you give him the address. Yeah, let me tell you, because you you like always every jumble time. Stuff. Every time. So, uh, two things I want to say. One, my podcast correctly. So it's Journey of a New Entrepreneur. All right, uh, and I have the podcast, which actually has been like just a real hobby up to this point. But I'm actually really excited. I've got some things in store, and I'm about to like crank it up and like do that thing right. And then uh, the YouTube channel, Journey of a New Entrepreneur. That's where most of the content is. Uh, a bunch of videos and just kind of watching my son and I build our business from literally zero up to where we are today and into the future. Second thing I want to mention for everyone that's watching this video, this white spot under my nose, it's not powdered sugar. It's not cocaine. I ask what everyone always says to me. It's just old age. And for some reason, the gray, it's right there, just like a dime right under my nose. And you would say, Bob, why don't you dye that thing? And I'm like, I do dye it. I do. But it just keeps growing out and I'm lazy and, and I'm self-conscious. And so now you all know I, I don't eat donuts all the time. It's, it's just, I'm getting old, man. Uh, Bobby Walker, uh, hashtag it's not cocaine. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, if you didn't have it though, like I couldn't imagine. You're just one of those people that just looks like perfect with the goatee. Like if you didn't have that, your, your image would just go well, down the I love the goatee. I just don't like the white spot under my nose. That's all. So it's just, it's going to bleed down and you're just going to have yeah. gray all over. Eventually. Hopefully I probably shouldn't have brought it up. Now it's like, now everyone's going to go from the audio to the YouTube video and like make fun of me. If you make fun of me, I'm coming for you at the huge convention. So just know that Bobby is like uh, six foot nine and like 320 pounds. He's just a uh, solid muscle. Um, it's just, <laughs> you don't mess with him. it's just, uh, yeah. 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 No, uh, but I do. I always butcher that. And you want to know something funny? I actually um, remember seeing posts from you on Reddit before you were like into kind of our groups and I actually saw you. So, Oh, really? Where, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's where a lot of people I think have found that too. It was very uh, cool. I just remember searching Reddit for like window cleaning just to see what groups were and stuff. And that pulled up because it was like, you know, a billion views and everything else. So yeah. Well, just fun, fun little fact on that. If you, uh, if you go to Reddit, if you just want to, if, if you like the whole journey of a new entrepreneur newer thing, if you want to see me when I had my first nervous breakdown, which was like <laughs> losing my job and deciding to start the business. Cause I've had many since I've started the business. Uh, so the, the Reddit name is do it every day with an underscore under each name or under each word. And you can go back to like the very first, uh, 
entrepreneur post because I posted like some tattoos on there and no one likes my tattoos. But, but anyway, <laughs> I, uh, my first entrepreneur post and it, I literally wrote that when laying in my bed thinking, Oh, I'm like, I, I lost my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to start a window cleaning company tomorrow. And then I had people posting on there. A lot of them were encouraging, but then some of them were like, dude, don't do this. Go get a job. You do not want to do this. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm ruining my life. But, <laughs> but uh, we're good. I'm, I'm nice. Good. Uh, see, yeah. I like, I like that you explained that it was the first breakdown you've had. Cause that's actually what we're talking about today <laughs> is like, uh, you know, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. It's just not no. everything that people post up there, uh, Facebook and forum groups and, uh, Instagram, all these other places, people only post the positives. So it's pretty mm -hmm. awesome that you've kind of been able to like you got to see one of the hardest parts of your life in writing. Like you can read it and then refeel everything where the rest of us just bottle it and pack it down low to never come out again. Right. Yeah. Well, and truth be told, that's, I, I don't mean to sit here and just like talk about my, my channel and all that stuff. But as I do it, I have a big, I'm doing it because I want to do it. You know, I mean, it's like my thing. Yeah. I, I'm not pretending to be some selfless guy that's like, I'm doing this for the world. I'm doing it for me. You know, I want to, I want to go back one day and watch it all and be like, that was awesome. You know, that's but right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, but as I'm doing it, it's like, I get a lot of people that reach out to me that, uh, you know, on a weekly basis that say, Hey man, just thanks for keeping it real. You know? And, and the, you know, the, the worst video I posted was, uh, I referenced it a lot, but the worst one I posted, I talk about how I was just like such a total asshole that my son, I'm, I don't know if we can cuss. I'm sorry. Bleep oh, yeah. that out. My bad. <laughs> uh, but, uh, just a total bum hole that, uh, you know, my son wanted to quit again, but like, we like really blew up and, and he's my business partner. He's not an employee. He's a business partner. He wanted to quit. And, and, but you know, I, I've just tried to keep it real because I know that, uh, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of us here, Josh, but I know like whenever I watch, I watch these things online, whether it's YouTube videos, whether it's Facebook groups and stuff like that. And you always see people that are like, they're constantly, um, they're just talking about how amazing the business is. And they're like, you know, I don't, I don't market. I can't get up to all the work, you know, anyway, I, if I market it, I wouldn't be able to do it or, or, uh, you know, yep. Springs here. We can't even answer the phones. They're ringing so much. And, and you know, I've got 12 trucks or I've only got one truck, but it's doing $4 million a year. You know, just all of this stuff. And like, I watch it and I'm like, what, what is wrong with me? You know? And, and that's like my initial reaction was, I was like, what am I doing wrong? And then after kind of watching it for a while and paying attention, it's like you start to realize that, and I think you said we can cuss, but I won't. But a lot of people are just full of crap. You know, I don't want to say crap, but a lot of people are just full of crap. And it's just kind of a measuring contest online. And that's like, so with me, my point in bringing all that up was, I just really try to share the the raw part of it too. And, and I do, I like to talk about the victories and the, the fun, cool stuff, but I'll sometimes I'll just get on there and be like, let me tell you how I suck today <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and go from there. But, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know where to go with that except for saying, you know, if I could just give any advice to some guys out there on, on that thing is, you know, the people that want to just like throw out all the good all the time, and they don't ever sprinkle in, at least sprinkle in some of the bad, those are probably the guys you don't want to be listening to because they're not very realistic guys. You know, I got a business coach that I pay and that guy tells me about where he screws up and he's got like kajillions of dollars and tons of successful businesses, but he's not a highlight reel. And I'm paying that dude. Um, I'd probably never pay someone that never let me know that they were human or or real. And I wouldn't definitely wouldn't listen to anyone that said, Hey, I made it. I succeeded. And I had no pain the whole way. Cause I'm thinking yeah. you're just full of crap, man. You know? So, right. yeah. So I don't know. I, I try to keep it real. And I think that, uh, you need to pay attention to people that keep it real because those are the guys that are probably, uh, the best ones to emulate and, and pay attention to. So. Yeah. You, you know, it's interesting about like learning lessons and that's what all everybody who's watching right now or listening. That's what we're here for is to kind of learn things and pick it up. Even if it's just one little thing, but if you did something wrong and you had a failure, you know why it failed. Very mm -hmm. seldom do you're like, I don't know what happened because you do everything in your power to figure out exactly what happened. When mm -hmm. people are successful, it's, it's contributing, you know, the successes because of a hundred things they've done. So it's so much harder to learn from someone's success than it is to learn from somebody's mistakes. Like 
when I started window cleaning 14, 15 years ago, there wasn't all this. Gary Maurer, there was one email group and it was the most you know, difficult thing to kind of follow and that, you know, but it was the only resource out there. So mm-hmm. you kind of had to figure it out yourself and go, well, that doesn't work. I shouldn't do that. You know, like the mistakes that you've made. Now a lot of guys can come on and they can find out the mistakes. You go into a Facebook group and say, hey, I want to do this. You'll have 50 people tell you why it's wrong. Mm-hmm. Maybe 50 people tell you why it's right. So you can learn so much more from mistakes. And I, that's why I really feel like that should be out there too. Well, yeah, you're right. Mistakes are the, I don't, I don't really have a phrase, but let, let me come up with something here. They're the worst way to uh, experience something, but the best way to learn it, maybe, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's the lesson best learned whenever you, you really screw it up. And then I think where in life where we really, as people start to get ahead is when we can, have the wisdom to learn from someone else's and you know, like with my business, <clears throat> one, one thing, you know, here we are, we've started our third season. So we've got two, two years under our belt starting the third season. And one good thing I don't have with uh, an odd end exception here or there is um, like, I don't have that price problem because when I started, I did enough reading, enough listening where people said, don't do your prices low. Because even though you're making money as that owner operator today and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm killing it. As your company grows, those low price points are going to be uh, prohibitive. And then those customers that you spend all that time in the first one, two, three years gaining, they're going to be worthless to your company because they're not going to want to pay the higher prices when you, when you have to get them up to that, yep. that level. So I learned from other people's mistakes on that one alone. And that's probably... Uh, probably the biggest unsung hero for me is I didn't go low on that pricing because I heard all these other guys cry about it. You know, uh, I got, there's, there's many, 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 but I, oh my God, that one's huge. You know, just, you, you've got to, got to pay attention, be humble, you know, uh, allow yourself to realize that other people are, they're not smarter than you, but they might have some wisdom that you don't have. They have some experience you don't have and, and they may know what's up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we talked about it a little bit beforehand too, is Facebook is super detrimental to like marriages because of the same thing where people will look at it and you only post <clears throat> awesome stuff. Like if you are um, a Facebook friend of yours, say you post these awesome pictures and videos where you're at Disney and everything's going on and every picture, everybody's smiling. Like people can see the good, but nobody posts the bad and that's not anybody's nobody does because nobody wants to see that i had the stomach flu right like that's just not something you You could hear me complain about it but i don't that's not what you want to follow so or or no one wants to post my wife doesn't have confidence in me to uh chase our dreams or or uh, my my wife doesn't trust me or or (laughs) yeah no one posts that stuff yeah they they don't post good i i was actually telling you beforehand i so i've been married 21 years now uh, to one person, as a matter of fact, which I'm thank you, I'm pretty proud of, <laughs> and uh, which we got married way too young. We uh, I don't know if we were, I don't know if we were really good at marriage early on, or if we were just really naive and didn't know uh, <laughs> didn't know any yeah. better. But I was actually engaged while I was in high school, and she wasn't pregnant. So it's like crazy, wow. crazy stuff. You know, it's like <laughs> typically you hear those stories. It's like oh yeah, baby on the way, but yeah. um, <laughs> but early on, you know, like my wife and I, we've, we've had a great relationship and it's actually been very similar to like this entrepreneurial journey that I've been on, like, like with my son, where it's like, uh, we're getting closer all the time. We have some really great moments, but we've had some, some rough times. Uh, we've never like the D word, you know, we've never allowed that. And for those of you that don't know, I'm talking about divorce, (laughs) not the other D, but the D word, we, uh, (laughs) um, we've never allowed that uh, around the house. And we, um, but there's been so many times where we kind of felt bad even before Facebook because I am that old. Uh, you know, so 20 years ago, I remember like we would see people if we were out like with the church group or this, that there's all these people that were always like portraying everything to be perfect. And I'm kind of a broken record now because it's the same thing with the business thing where it's like you start to think is something broke with me. You know, it's yeah. like we're not we're not this this perfect thing. But as the years have gone by uh, and I'm not saying every relationship that I've seen that was like that, you know, ended. But as the years have have gone by, you start to see um, 
some of those relationships in some of them aren't aren't doing so great and then uh, you can watch yours where it's like yeah i don't have to act to be that great but we do those little things right every day you know we do the the hug the kiss the i don't say nasty stuff when we get in a fight i don't you know the things like right. we get in fights but we don't say the nasty stuff and and it adds up and here we are 20 years later and i'm gonna be honest my wife is a lucky lucky woman so uh <laughs> But yeah, the, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm just rambling and babbling here, but uh, I'm really passionate about this whole like highlight reel thing because I've been guilty of it too, you know, where you, yeah. you post a lot of good stuff. But uh, I think the reason I, I like talking about this is uh, I've come to the realization and like it doesn't bug me anymore. But I know so many people, they see this other crap going on and you feel like, oh, that guy says he can't answer the phones. So, well, here, here's the deal. Either he's lying, he's embellishing, or he just thinks that he doesn't have enough time to answer five calls that day. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, you, you don't hear the guys that are doing like $5 million a year. You don't ever hear them say, oh, my God, we can't get to the phones. Because they hire another person. Yeah, they do the things right. So the people that are usually doing that, they're, they're, they're humble bragging. You know, oh, I, miss, yeah. I missed out on $20,000 at work today because I couldn't get to it. You know, yeah, yeah. I don't hear the big guys talk about that stuff. Yeah, and, and that's, you know. I do feel a little bit bad where we didn't, I didn't really come up with that side of it, but the new guys, I mean, especially this time of year, some people start business the first of the year and window cleaning is the worst decision you can make for the fact that you're not going to have work for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, prepping everything is fine, but there's guys now, especially this time of year, like March and April are really hard. Not only is it tax time, which of course all of us hate, but mm -hmm. it's the time where you can't tell like, you know, everybody wants to buy supplies, but yet they don't have the money to kind of get supplies, but yet they have to get the work before they get the supplies. And these new guys, they don't know where to go. I mean, I got guys that are trying to get starter kits because they don't have any work, but yet they can't get the starter kits because they don't have the work. And they're like, well, mm -hmm. I want to get some jobs first and then I want to get the starter kit. Well, it's like, well, then don't, you need to learn, how, you know, it's just a really hard time and people will look at everybody else there's guys out there right now, like you said, that are saying it's so busy. Oh, it's happened. It's, oh, it's so busy. It's so busy. But it's not. It's mm -hmm. not. I mean, we track the entire country because that's what we do. I know when California is busy. I know when Utah is busy. I mm -hmm. know when Boston's under snow, right? So it, it just isn't happening quite the way it is. And like you said, people see that and they go, well, this is, this is like, me like I can't wait to do that I can't wait till you know March I'm getting so many calls that I'm or those guys that say I make you know $125 an hour every hour you make 125 or is that like how you worked it up to yeah. make I mean I could show you how I make $125 an hour because I don't go for drive time and I don't take you know so <laughs> yeah I can make some really impressive numbers but uh they don't all translate to my checking account yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. So it, when you look at it, that's all we're saying is if you're new or you're experienced, don't always look at somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's so much better to look at yourself. And there are so many things that guys can be proud of, of what they've done, or what they've accomplished and things that they can focus on to be better at, mm -hmm. which doesn't necessarily have to keep up with the Joneses, right? They just get to kind of do their own thing and see where they're, they're either lacking and increase that or where the positives are. If you focus on your own positives, it's the same. Yeah. And, and if I can just kind of, I, I don't know that we're wrapping that up, but if I can just add one more thing, you know, back when I was in the corporate world, uh, so merger, a merger happened and, and this new CEO that was pretty cool, this new company I was a part of, this is like a $2 billion company. So like not one of the biggest on the planet, but a pr that's still pretty big, you know, that's pretty, pretty big darn company. big. Yeah. Yeah. And they, um, his thing was this because like here he is he has I don't even know how many employees he had and and how many customers and all this stuff but his thing wasn't like you got to do these grandiose things he said you just got to do the little things and you got to do them right and you got to do them every day and like my business coach you know he uh he's kind of been hammering on me he's like Bob you really suck at some of these things here here's what I need you to focus on because I'm always like ah look at this awesome thing way up there yeah. um and then i get discouraged because i'm not grabbing it and he's like here's why you're reaching for the awesome thing but like you need to focus on the the process you know the, yeah. the, the you know so instead of focusing on my phones aren't ringing off the hook what should we focus on well focus on the little things that get the phones to ring once a day then double your efforts and you get it twice a day then you double your efforts and you're at four times a day right do the do the processes that that 
uh, add up to those really, really big things. And I, I heard one guy, we were actually, I'm, we're going to, I'm going to talk about this on my podcast in the near future. I don't know if you know, Michael Geller, but, um, Michael Geller, I was talking with him and we were actually talking about like customer service and ex the customer experience and the things that separate your company apart from the others. But it still applies here when it comes to like growing, you know, as you're not, so we were talking about how, you know, Mrs. Customer, here's why we're better and what separates us from everyone else. And he says, you know, that's a great line. But then when there's like a $400 price difference, he's like, you know, there's a value wall there, but you don't have a $400 brick. There's not one thing that your company does that makes you $400 better than the other person. And there's not one thing that you can do, like say when you're trying to start this business and grow it and scale it, that you're going to all of a sudden have $100,000 in revenue come in because you did this one little thing. But yeah. in this wall that you're building, there might be a whole lot of little like $10 things, a whole lot of little $50 things. And with those, you build a wall that's not that, you know, $400 wall. It's, it's a $10,000 wall. And you're yeah. $400 over the comp competitors. And it doesn't matter. You've built a fortress. It's impenetrable. And, yeah. uh, and, but, but you did it with all of these little things that add up. Because I think you would agree, Josh, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm all for like being better, but there's not one huge thing you can do that's going to make you successful and get that phone ringing off the hook, except for, and I'm going to quote Pat Clark on this one, is some Goya. That's the one big thing that you can do that will get you there, and that just stands for get off your ass. That's yeah. the only biggie. Everything else is little stuff. Flyers, fucking postcards, door hangers, five arounds. Uh, networking groups, you know, what it, all of those little things, posting in those Facebook groups, you know, every day or every week, all that stuff, all of those little things will eventually add up to those, those, those phones ringing. But guess what guys, it's still not easy. There's not a get rich quick thing. Uh, you have to do that like the first season and then you do it the second season. And then like the third season, all of a sudden you're getting all that new work and all the other ones are calling you back yeah. and things are now you're like, Oh my God, it's happening. It's working. So yeah, it's good stuff. Am I, I'll shut up. I'm going. No, no, no. That, uh, I, everything you say is always right. I just, I'm, I'm pretending to watch my own. What was that? You, what was that? what did you just say? <clears throat> I said, uh, everything you said is so <laughs> interesting. We'll, uh, we'll have that play back. That'll be a clip from the, no, Can but we put that like as part of the intro to the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just keep uh, looping that one section. Yeah. <laughs> But it is true. Like everybody always says, you know, uh, I have X amount of money. What can I do? What's the one thing? Or what's the one thing you recommend to do them? And it's not, it's like you said, you know, that first brick that you laid didn't seem very important because you're trying to build a wall that's keeping people out. You go, it's a brick. I can step right over it. I can mm -hmm. in, in stride, but that brick makes everything else line up, mm -hmm. you know, yep. and it, it, that, that's exactly it. I, I, you know, it's really it's still hard, like you said, but the process is your own. Everybody, because you're in business, after three years, you can't do something exactly the same way somebody else did after three years because yeah. one day you'll do something different. Uh, business itself has, it's like pads in the snow or sand or something. It like wants to take you where it's going to take you, even if you have one certain path in your brain. And, and I think that's where the damage is happening when you see people that are bragging on themselves is like, mm. well, why did, why did I do that? Or somebody, you know, said, uh, I, I went and did uh, home shows. I love home shows. I, I love home shows. I've made a great money on home shows. You watch somebody who did a home show booth and you go, oh, why did I do that? I got to do home show booths. Yep. Well, maybe that's not your path. Maybe that's not mm. your thing. It's already been done. That guy already has you know, 10 trucks on the road. And that's why it looks like it's going because he's got a 40 foot booth there. When yeah. you're starting up, you got no booth and you're trying to like have a couple pieces of paper to hand out in your 10 foot booth. You, yeah. know? you can't afford the $800 cheap display for a home show. It's probably not your thing yet. Just maybe. Yeah. yeah that's exactly no, I, I love it. It's, 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 the, it's the steps that it takes to kind of get there. And, and that's one of the things that people do on Facebook that we had talked about that that's people say things to convince themselves too. So when these guys come on there and they, they argue over stuff, you know, is not true. And, and we've seen it. Uh, this isn't to bring up names or anything for anybody, but there are people out there who have said things that aren't obviously true. And that's almost what they're known for. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's the only reason that people would say things 
is to convince themselves just as much. You yeah. know, when you, when you, when you go to your high school reunion, what happens? Everybody gets dressed up and they, they show up with a, you know, swagger. What do you do? Well, I'm the, I, uh, I own a business. That's what I do. You know, like, what do I do? Let me check my Apple watch and see if I have any emails from work here. Gold yeah, yeah. Uh, Cindy, could you write that? <laughs> That's what it is. Like everybody kind of has to, and why they're saying that is not just to impress somebody they'll never see again, which is part of it. But it's also to make themselves feel like since high school, I've done something right. Like nobody wants to fail themselves. And sometimes it's hard to see the light. This time of year is the biggest, hardest time for people where I know people who just last week, uh, my episode that I had on toxic uh, customers was because of somebody who got to the point. It was like breaking point, close the doors. Like I'm done. I'm not, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, and it was that exact thing. He's looking at everybody else. He's like, all oh, these guys are getting this money and I got these stupid clients that are yelling at me and, and I can't get, I can't catch a break. I can't get a thing. I can't. And it's mm-hmm. very, very hard to see, you know, you always want a new car if you're always watching car ads, you know, it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Well, and just to, to bring this one home, uh, you know, obviously the bottom line is this, if you want to get somewhere, you, you know, you've got to invest in yourself. You've got to, uh, you, and investing in yourself doesn't always cost money. Um, you know, the time's going to come, you need to spend money on it too. But before you have a ton of money, maybe, maybe you don't got 20 bucks for that new book. I don't know. Um, there's, there's online free resources. There's, uh, you know, Facebook groups, find the groups that are full of positivity. And I don't mean <laughs> sunshine and rainbows, which we were kind of talking about, but I, I don't mean like, the positivity that says, Oh, nothing's wrong. You don't ever get there. This is this, Let me give an analogy. You got some people that'll say, man, it has been really hard for me to work through building a system and building a culture at my business where we can hire good people that stay for a while. Then there's someone that says, no one out there wants to work and you just can't hire good people. And if you want to do it yourself or if you want it done right, you got to do it yourself. Well, they both kind of said the same thing, but one of them was like, what, the first one that's like, eh, I worked really hard. They're just not a little bitch. You know, they're, they're, they're like doing it and finding a way to work through it. So when I say find a positive group, what I mean is find people that are positive that, yeah, this is hard. It feels impossible sometimes, but we've seen other people do it. Therefore, there's got to be a way for us to like reverse engineer that and get there. And when you find people like that, you start getting around them. You'll get influenced and be able to find the people that influence them. You know, that, so that'll give you an opportunity to invest in yourself. Um, you know, be a part of, uh, you know, paid things are great. Uh, maybe there's local, uh, you know, some local coaches you can talk with. Maybe there's, uh, uh, I'm paying for a business coach right now that it's, it's the best money I've ever spent. I, it's like every month when the money comes out, you know, my account automatically at, right at the beginning, I'm like, God dang it. There's an, that's, uh, you know, <laughs> but then like two or three seconds later, I'm like, Oh yeah, that guy did this for me this, this month. Yeah. You know? yeah. And you know, so, so sometimes you, you can pay big, sometimes you can pay little, sometimes it's podcasts, but listen to the right things, get around the right people. And, and those are the ones that will level with you of like, yeah, it's hard yeah, my phone is ringing off the hook, but it took me like five years to get to that point. And then they can help you maybe break it down and, and get there. Um, if you've got the, the get rich quick thing, and I'm kind of guilty of that because I always want to go from like, oh, I'm in year three. Let's do $5 million this year. Eh, it's not going to happen. But, uh, you know, but so I've got to like pace myself. And, and as my coach says, I need to uh, embrace the, the, the systems or embrace the, the, uh, the, the little things every day that I've got to do right. So, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's surrounding yourself with people that you want to be like, and that's Mm -hmm. when you find a group of guys and we all have our friends, everybody that's around you is usually they are somebody you want to be with, like Mm -hmm. be like, you know, you're not hanging out with guys that, that have, you know, a dumpy attitude and they're not doing anything. They're just uh, because, because that drags you down. It's surrounding yourself with people who are genuinely wanting to help instead of just putting themselves out there for the whole world to see this, you know, big blanket. If you're putting out that blanket, yeah. you just don't have it. Oh, agreed. So I, I'm going to change gears real quick, unless you have something that, that you want to, yeah. did you see Captain Marvel yet? I have not. No. 
All right. I say we spoil it for everyone that's because uh, this is going to like go live here in like what a few days. So there'll still be yes, people yeah. who haven't seen it. Do you yeah. want to, do you want to just ruin it for everyone right now? Yeah. Just put it out there and yeah. uh, uh, I'll nah. give them your email so they can send it. <laughs> <laughs> now I like being liked too much. I wouldn't do it. I just, I didn't know if you'd seen it yet. I, did, I watched it and I saw all this like crap about it beforehand, you know, all this like, anti, uh, it's a good movie, but now I don't want to talk to you about it because I didn't know yet and see it. So never mind. No, no, I, I, you know, I have two young girls. Our movie viewing is a lot different. They're like into Harry Potter now, so we're watching those movies that are like when it came out when I was a kid, you know. So <laughs> they're in a little bit different stuff than uh, I have a buddy uh, here that his, he's got a son, and his son is huge into like action movies and com like uh, uh, comic books and that kind of thing. So he sees all those ones, and I'm just like, oh. You know, his kid has got like a sword and a cape on when he walks around the house. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> my, my daughters are watching makeup tutorials. It's a little bit different. Yeah, a little different, a little different. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail. I did mean to derail us, but yeah. I, I had to. I had to get to that one. So I, I'm just so. I'm just a nerd. I, I can't wait for Infinity War. Or Infinity War. I can't wait for Endgame to come out. And actually, we're taking all of our technicians, all of our employees, and and a plus one. We're gonna go watch Endgame when it comes out. Gonna do Hibachi mm -hmm. beforehand. Go see the movie. That'll be cool. So that's nice. Is that not what I'm going to be down there? Right. I can't yeah. just take, I don't know. You can. And then we'll post it on Facebook as a highlight reel of like, if you were good at what you did, you could also go just eat saying. hibachi and watch Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. See, it's, it just, it all comes back. That's what it is. We'll just have a, it, it, we won't show the big argument we have right before that. Yeah, well, it, that's. I think that's every time I see one of those posts. I know we're just ha kind of harping on it now, but when I see them, all I see is like hashtag you suck. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of yeah, the thing. Yeah. Like, I'm so amazing and you suck because you don't see have what I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it is what it is. Like you know, the longer you're in business, it just becomes easier to kind of weed through it. But man, there's just sometimes it's just it's hard. It's very, very hard, and uh, it's that time of year. So here, here's, here's what I, another one I got for you, Josh. So back behind you, I see a Steve-O sticker. I see a window Joe. I see Luke. Mm -hmm. I see some girl with a squeegee and a pink dress. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I see all these things. And I thought, I, I think my head would look really, really good on that wall. Honestly, probably the best. Because Joe, no offense, I think Luke wins the beard war. Yeah, um, yeah. Steve-O, probably the tattoo war, I'm assuming. I don't, you know. Uh, but I, I think I've got the dome thing locked up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a fat head made, one of those big ones. So like that whole area <laughs> you've got on the other side of you. Yeah. Yes. We'll just put me right over there with a little, nice. like one of those shiny, like, ding, you know, things on yes. my, on my dome there. So I like it. See, everybody's doing stickers. You should do stickers. They're so stinking cheap. Every, <laughs> let me rephrase that. Everybody's doing stickers except us because we ran out of sticker packs and all I have left are these little ones that we've been sending out with orders and people have been posting them all over. So somebody just put one on their like naked hairy belly and, and posted it. Oh, no. <laughs> that's uh yeah, they're, they're, they're showing up everywhere. It's, that's awesome. So, but once well, there's some, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was just going to say, once you have your stickers, then we'll, uh, we'll have to find some interesting place I, to put them. I might get some. <laughs> and, and speaking of tattoos, I almost had the worst thing happen to me. So I was out of town. I was actually at uh, ResponsaCon. I don't, are you familiar with ResponsaBid? I'm sure oh, yes. Kirk Kempton yes. and those guys. Good friend, um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm up, up in Pennsylvania at this con convention I had never heard of. It's a little bit, it, was a little, it was really cool, real small. Um, but uh, great event. But ResponsaCon was beforehand. And I'm up there and hanging out at the pool or at the hotel uh, bar after, you know, afterwards. And James Anthe, I, I think you know James. Tasty you know, Crouton. Yeah, oh Tasty gosh, Crouton. Yeah. And, we're hanging out and we may have been drinking a few adult beverages. Right. Allegedly, and then I look at, allegedly. I look at Facebook and Josh Latimer says, uh, Hey, quick poll. I'm in Vegas. Should I get a tattoo of my wife's name on my butt? And then of course everyone's like, yeah, you should do it. Yeah, you should do it. And one guy posts on there and he goes, if you do it, I'll get a sin gym. Uh, which if you don't know, that's the company Josh Latimer owns for anyone. listening. He goes, I'll get a sin gym tattoo. And I'm like, I posted, I'll do it too. And I'm like, I can't believe I just, uh, I was drinking and I already regretted it. Like, <laughs> <before the next laughs> <day>. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> nice, but nice. Anyway, so you'd so. be the guy with the send gym tattoo. There's a lot of. Uh, I had an employee where we went to a, a, a convention, and for some reason, he tried to impress everybody, and he ended up getting a tattoo at the convention of one of the squeegee brands, like on his. Oh wow! On his, like leg. <laughs> hey, I'm, whatever works, man. I, I, yeah, I got a tattoo. I, uh, this is a joke. It's not going to come across well on a podcast. I always tell people. I got a tattoo uh, here on my chest. It's a portrait of my mother-in-law. And then people will be like, hmm, that's interesting. And then, of course, I show it, and it's the Grim Reaper that I have, that I have on my chest. I always say it. Nice. It, it always gets a laugh from everyone at the table except for my wife. So. Yes, yes, and your mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't tell it around her. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Love you, Rhonda, if you're watching. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> See, it's not going to be posted out there, but now there's going to be conflict. See how that yeah. <laughs> anyway, but no, anyway. but I appreciate it. I uh, always love spending time with you. You are one of the cool kids. You are the coolest of the kids. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate your podcast. I am so sorry I butchered the name all the time. I forget to add the new in there, but tell us one more time. If people are listening, they want to listen to more of you. Where is everything? All right. I'm, I'm going to tell you, but I got to do one. I got to, I got to take a minute to get on the soapbox real fast. Got it. I listened to one of your last episodes and you said someone like really chewed you out for using the cool kid. You're always talking about being the cool kids and they sent you like this long email. I just want to say, yeah. I don't know who that is, but if you're listening, you're a big old crybaby, and uh, <laughs> you need to get over yourself. So anyway, uh, okay, journey thanks. of a new entrepreneur on YouTube, on Facebook, on uh, iTunes. And uh, that's it. Journey of a new entrepreneur. It's fun stuff. Go check it out. And um, I don't know. Love me. Hate me. I just like the attention. There you go. Do it. Go subscribe. He's awesome. One of my favorite people in all of the world. And I get to go hang out with you in a couple of weeks, I think sometime. Yeah, dude. April, April, something like that. How about this? How about we commit to everyone? We're, Cause we're going to get together at one point. We'll probably have a beer or something. I don't know why. I, I don't know if you drink beer. I don't know. We'll, yeah. we'll, a Coke or whatever. And uh, we'll, we'll do a Facebook selfie on Disney property and we're going to go hashtag highlight reel. How's that? Ooh, I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thanks, guys. If you are watching and you are not one of the cool kids yet and you want to get your supplies through me, please do. That's what I'm here for. My number, 862-312-2026. Like Bobby said, you can actually just throw it in your cart, call me, and be like, hey, it's ready to put in, and I will do that for you. That is what I love to do. Uh, my email is jersey at windowcleaner.com. Follow me on Instagram, uh, WCR Nation. Uh, no, Jersey, WCR Nation. I always get it wrong. It's, it's not just you, it's me too. I get it wrong. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching, listening, and everything else. Thumbs up on the video YouTube. And until next week, go out there, follow Bobby Walker, and go out there and be epic.